Hello, in this video, I'm gonna show you multiple ways that you can add images to your WordPress website. I'll show you how to add standalone images, WordPress image galleries, featured images to display at the top of your blog posts, and then I'll show you how to optimize the size of your images so that your web pages load faster. All right, so let's open a post. And I just have a very basic post here with a little bit of text, so let's add an image. And we're using the Gutenberg editor, which is the future of WordPress. And if you wanna learn more about how to use Gutenberg, check out this video right here. So to add an image, you can either hit the forward slash button and type image, and then select image from this box here. Or you can just click the plus icon here and search for image. This brings up the add image dialog, and we can either upload an image directly, pick one from our media library if it's already been uploaded, or and insert it from a URL, which in general isn't recommended. So in this case, I'm just gonna upload one from my computer. And you can upload one image at a time, or you can upload multiple at once. In this case, I'm just gonna upload one. As you can see here, it switched to the block view, which lets you adjust certain properties of the image. For example, we can make it a rounded image or rectangle. You can add the alternative text, which makes it more SEO friendly and is also good for people with disabilities. You can select an image size from the defaults preset by your theme, or you can define a custom size if you want. And finally, if you come here, you can choose an alignment for your image. So you can align it to the right, left, make it full width on the page, or align it in the center. You also have the option if you select the image to add a descriptive caption if you want. And you can also add a link to the image if you want. In addition to individual images, you can also add entire image galleries. Image galleries allow you to present multiple images in an organized layout. And this feature is built right into the WordPress core. So to add a gallery, we'll just click the plus icon, search for gallery. And this advanced gallery is from another third-party plugin that's free but we're gonna use the default WordPress gallery. And you can either again upload or choose from your media library. This time I'm gonna choose from my media library. So let's go here and click on my media library and I'll add these four images. So you can just shift click to select them all. You can add the alt text here if you want or we can add the alt text later. So let's just click create. You can also add the captions if you want or reorder your images in the gallery. All right, so it's inserted the gallery and it's using like a three by one layout, but you can also customize this layout if you want. So you can change the number of columns. So we could go two by two or go four wide. And don't worry, even though these images look small on the front end, you can still let your visitors preview them full size. There's a couple ways to do this. So first we can click on any one of the images in the gallery. And we could say link to media file. If we refresh the page and click one, you can see it links to the full size media file. And another option is to use a Lightbox plugin, which turns your, which will load your entire gallery in a floating Lightbox overlay. In this case, I've installed a free plugin called uh, Gallery Lightbox Lite. And all you have to do is install it and activate it. And then if you set your post in your link to, if you set it to none, it will automatically load the light box instead. So we'll go back to the front end, refresh, and now it loads in this beautiful light box. You can control scroll left and right with the arrow keys. It's got the film strip view below. You can also navigate by clicking on one of the thumbnails or by clicking the left and right arrows with your mouse. And don't worry, if you don't like the style of this gallery plugin, there are tons of other free Lightbox and Gallery plugins in the WordPress repository. Another one I really like is the Responsive Lightbox and Gallery by DFactory. Another important type of image you should know about are featured images. And basically there's one featured image allowed per post. And depending on your theme will usually be displayed at the top of your page somewhere. So if we go to the document view here and we scroll down, you can see you have the option to add a featured image. So let's set the featured image for this post. And we'll upload a new file. Let's go with this guy here. And put in your alt text. And click set featured image. And now if we update the post, 
and go to the front end and refresh, you'll see the Astra theme is putting the featured image right here at the top of the post. Featured images don't only display at the top of your post. You'll also find them throughout your theme. For example, in your archive pages. Now file sizes on images can add up really quickly. You can see here this one is 660 kilobytes. And if you have multiple images on a page, you can easily have a page size of multiple megabytes. And that means a slower load time. So it's a good idea to compress your images. There are a couple options, but one of the easiest to use is called WP Smush. So let's get a new plugin. Just search for Smush. And you can install and activate. And this plugin is super easy to use. So you can choose to automatically optimize new uploads, which I recommend. You can strip image metadata or not. If you're a photographer, you might want to leave that so it's on your site. And you can use lazy loading feature, but we don't need that for now. It's already detected the images in our media library that aren't compressed yet. So we can do a bulk smush. All right, our images have been smushed. So let's go back to a post. So let's check our file size on our front end now. We'll reload the site and we can go to Chrome Inspector Tools and go to Network and we'll just reload the page. And the image is being loaded here. You can see it's loading a different size image than the actual full size one we stored. And that's because you don't need anything wider than the content area. And the file size is only 112 kilobytes. And if you look at the image, you can't even tell. It doesn't look any lower quality than the full size image, but we're saving almost 500 kilobytes and more than 75% of the bandwidth. So definitely use an image compression plugin like Smush. You get faster page load times, better scores on speed tests like GT Metrics, and maybe even a Google ranking bump as well. Now at this point, you're probably wondering where you can get some images for your own site without paying outrageous royalty fees like you might find at Adobe Stock or other stock photo sites where it could be 10, 20, $30 an image. Two terrific sites that I like to use that are completely free are pixabay.com and Unsplash. And between them, you'll find over 2 million completely free images with no attribution required. You can search for almost anything. Let's just search for a beach. There's literally hundreds of pictures to choose from. And if you click, you'll see the license is free for commercial use, no attribution required. And you can download really high resolutions, up to 10 megapixels. Unsplash is much the same and has really high quality images. And just like Pixabay, all the images are royalty free and require no attribution whatsoever. You can create an account or download for free with that one. Just click on an image, click download free, and that's it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please take a quick second and hit that like button. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. If you've got questions about this video or a suggestion for a future video, let me know in the comments below. Now get out there and build that website.